absolutely beyond comprehension that the mathematicians of this world never realized that there is a difference between a dimension, a coordinate, and a vector. A mathematician believes that a dimension is just a bunch of coordinates. Dimension? The least number of independent coordinates required to specify uniquely the points in a space. <laughs> An object is said to have as many dimensions as there are axes required to locate its position in space. Is a dimension the same thing as a coordinate? I thought dimensions were related to architecture, and that coordinates were used to specify the locations of things. For the purposes of science, the three dimensions are known as length, width, and height, and have to do with structure and orientation dimensions point outwards from an object. The three coordinates are known as longitude, latitude, and altitude. Unlike dimensions, they are used to specify location and point inwards, towards the object. Dimensions and coordinates are conceptually static. The three vectors are known as depth, breadth, and elevation. They specify the mutually orthogonal directions in which an object may move Vectors are dynamic, and like dimensions, also point outwards from the object under study. In science, dimensions, coordinates, and vectors have only two attributes, direction and orthogonality. Direction and orthogonality are strictly qualitative concepts. We don't need to learn trigonometry to understand that a cross has one stick perpendicular to another. The problem in mathematical physics is that the members of this religion have no use for the qualitative lines of physics. The mathematicians never use dimensions, coordinates, or vectors. They use number lines. A number line differs from the dimensions, coordinates, and vectors of physics in that it has neither direction nor orthogonality. In order to get around this limitation, the mathematicians adopted the bad habit of placing a geometric line above the numbers. They called this incongruous blend a number line. Why did the mathematicians place this line? The reason is clear. The geometric line enables the mathematician to give direction to a series of numbers. In this stealthy manner, our mathematicians ushered their number sequence into the physical world. They incongruously blended magnitudes with direction. The result is that they got away with a hilarious notion that two number lines can run perpendicular to one another. The scholars at Cambridge and Harvard refer to this amusing contraption as Cartesian coordinates. So is there a problem with these conventions? In his book, A Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking claims that the globe he has in his living room is two-dimensional. The surface of the Earth is two-dimensional because the position of a point can be specified by two coordinates, latitude and longitude. For unknown reasons, Hawking omits the number line known as radius, which would make his globe 3D. Hawking concedes so much when he claims that the living room in which the globe sits is three-dimensional. Again, he justifies this with coordinates. One can say that a point in a room is seven feet from one wall, three feet from another, and five feet above the floor. And if he includes time, Hawking believes that his living room suddenly becomes four-dimensional. It is often helpful to think of the four coordinates of an event as specifying its position in a four-dimensional space called space-time. Like the majority of mathematicians, Hawking uses the terms dimension and coordinate inconsistently, jumping back and forth between the dimensions and coordinates of ordinary speech on the one hand, and mathematical number lines on the other. More fundamental yet is Hawking's amusing claim that time is a dimension. In relativity, there is no real distinction between the space and time coordinates. This may be true in relativity. It certainly is not true in science. Therefore, it is not surprising when Hawking confuses coordinates with dimensions.
One could specify that a point was at a certain latitude and longitude and a certain height above sea level. What? Height is a coordinate? In science, we know better. The coordinate which runs up and down is called altitude. This is subject matter that we typically cover in high school. Likewise, Hawking sees no problem when he casually replaces the dimension of height with time in what he calls a space-time diagram. I shall generally use diagrams in which time increases upward and one of the spatial dimensions is shown horizontally. Is it rational to substitute height with time? Does time run perpendicular to width? It is absolutely stunning to realize that the mathematicians confuse time for a dimension and call it a coordinate. Like all dimensions, coordinates, and vectors of mathematics, time is a number line. Time has magnitude, but lacks direction and orthogonality. You don't believe me? Don't say another word. Just point with your finger in the direction in which time flows or runs. Hawking also claims that he lives within a sphere known as space-time. He asserts that the sphere is four-dimensional and that it is expanding. Time is not completely separate from an independent of space, but is combined with it to form an object called space-time. As time runs forward, the universe expands. Time runs forward? In which direction is that? For the purposes of science, time is an abstract concept and not a brick. It cannot and does not form a malleable balloon with space. This may explain why Hawking cannot even imagine the globe he claims to inhabit. It is often helpful to think of the four coordinates of an event as specifying its position in a four-dimensional space called space-time. It is impossible to imagine a four-dimensional space. What is it that is preventing Hawking from watching a movie of an expanding balloon? Indeed, the NASA Gravity Probe B-Site does not justify the four dimensions of space-time with coordinates as Hawking does, but with the three dimensions of physics, height, width, and length, and a number line known as time. So the questions for the mathematicians are, does a cube become four-dimensional because we factor time? Do you have trouble imagining a cube when your clock ticks? How does time alter the shape or dimensionality of a cube? A more fundamental problem with Hawking's proposal is that he fails to account for the medium that gives shape to his sphere. What is space-time expanding into? Hawking tells you that he and another Cambridge scholar have calculated that space-time looks like a P. Well, it's small and round, but not perfectly round, and it has little dimples. It's something like a pea. If space-time is shaped like a pea, why can't Hawking imagine space-time? What entity surrounds and gives shape to this pea? Do you think that you would be able to visualize the shape of a pea without a background to provide it with contour? So how is a 3D pea like a 4D space-time? These are not philosophical issues. They summarily debunk relativistic space-time. The mathematicians will argue that the length, width, and height notion of dimension is the ordinary version used by peasants, whereas the number of coordinates version is the scholarly variant used by the educated classes. This argument is baseless. A definition is scientific if it can be used consistently. This is an objective criterion. Hawking shows instead that the mathematicians cannot use the scholarly version twice in a row in the same dissertation. If relativity space-time is constructed with the number lines of mathematics, it has nothing to do with science.